I think I can give um, you know, a, a number of examples then kind of quickly here uh, using this strategy. Find all six trig values for theta when, okay, when theta is equal to, uh, how about, um, hmm, what should I use? How about uh, 7 pi over 4? Okay, 7 pi over 4. Now, um, it, it, it's nice to know where that is on the circle. And, um, you, but your fallback when it comes to radiance, because remember, no degree marks, it's radiance. And especially when you see pi, there's probably no, no degree marks, and that, that really clues it off. In fact, you know, remember that pi is a half circle. And this is one and three quarter half circles. So here is one half circle, and the other three quarter half circle is here. Or you can say that, okay, here's a quarter circle. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right there, here's seven pi over four. Now, you, you can also uh, say, well, look, this is um, in degrees. The pi's cancel. And uh, work that out. Let's see, I think it's, uh, what would it be? 315 degrees. 315 degrees. So, uh, okay. I, I think you ought to try to learn those radians like I'm doing here, best you can. But if you're really not sure, you can also change it to degrees, or if you're a lot more comfortable with degrees. So it is 315 degrees. And 315 degrees is a rotation which goes there to there. Now it's almost a total circle. But it's also minus 45 degrees. Minus 45 degrees. So yeah, I'm not going to say that 315 degrees equals minus 45 degrees. However, on the circle, they are in the same location, and the trigonometric values are equal. So they, um, so so don't, don't ever assume that. Okay, well, 40, negative 45 is the same as 315. No, it's not. But they are in the same locations. So um, all right. Well, then it looks like we're we're dealing with a 45 degree angle, isn't it? Uh, you know, some books will talk about a reference angle. I'm not sure quite that what that is, but I suspect that a reference angle would be, for this problem, would be 45 degrees. Okay. I think we have enough terminology to learn, so you, you draw a little pictures and get a feel for this. You don't need to know what a reference angle is, <laughs> in my opinion. In my opinion. Uh, if you're taking this from a different instructor, they may expect you to know what a reference angle is. Okay. Um, well, up here, you see the cosine, here's what I think, why, what you want to think about is what are the x and y values? See, the x values are here, that's x, and so this cosine is going to be positive. Positive what? Well, cosine 45 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. So cosine of theta is, no, oh, I said that wrong, didn't I? It's square root of 2 over 2 around 0 0.707, 70 percent, square root of 2 over 2 for 45 degrees. And the sine, however, down here it's going to be negative, isn't it? So sine in the fourth quadrant, remember the quadrants go 1, 2, 3, 4, sine in the fourth quadrant is negative, uh, cosine is positive because y is there negative here, x's are positive. All right, so uh, sine of theta of, um, uh, you know what I'd like to do, let me, let, me, <laughs> let me write this as cosine of 7 pi over 4. All right, cosine 7 pi over 4 is, uh, what do we say, square root of 2 over 2. All right, so the sine of pi over four, 7 pi over 4 would be minus square root of 2 over 2. What's the, uh, what's the tangent? Oh, tangent 7 pi over 4. Okay, my picture is not going to allow me to write the rest of it, is it? 7 pi over 4. All right, well, a, a tangent is sine divided by cosine. This number divided by that number is going to be minus 1. But you can see it here because this line has a slope of down 1 over 1. You know, it's a slope of negative, slope equals negative 1. That's the tangent, minus 1. 
All right, and, and then the rest of this is just, uh, you know, inverting these. So let's go ahead and knock those out. Um, you know, in, in earlier uh, videos, when you invert the screw 2 over 2, you just get screw 2. So the secant, 7 pi over 4, is square root of 2. The cosecant, 7 pi over 4, is minus the square root of 2. And cotangent, 7 pi over 4, 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. Same as the tangent there. So there you go. There's all trig, six trig values. Um, all right, well, let's do a couple more here. So let's fill in the blanks for 240 degrees. And, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and write cosine 240. Uh, cosine 240 degrees is sine 240 degrees is tangent. 240 degrees is, I guess I could have done this off camera, couldn't I? Uh, secant of 240 degrees cosecant 240 and finally cotangent 240 okay so let's write all those out and, and you know, put equals here don't put cosine 240 then a number it looks like you're multiplying everything together put equal signs in there that's part of our language isn't it of mathematics well where is 240 degrees and it is this is 0 degrees 90 180, 270, those are the degrees, and where's 240? Well, it's uh, 60 more than 180, it's down here somewhere, right? There's 240 degrees, great. All right, now then, um, so the cosine will be the x-coordinate. So, you know, here's the point on the, on the curve, I mean, I'm sorry, on the circle. And it's a x y coordinate, but the x coordinate is right here. And um, that would be minus one half, wouldn't it? You know, it's a friendly angle, so your choices are, you know, one half or uh, square root of three over two or square root of two over two for the friendly angles. Um, and it, it, of course, it could be negatives in here, and this is going to be a negative one half. All right, so cosine 240 is minus one half. About sine. Okay, sine 240. Ah, now look at that y value. It's negative. It's also negative, and it's pretty large. The largest one is screw three over two. So we're gonna call this minus screw three over two. And then tangent. Oh boy. Um, sine divided by cosine. Uh, that's minus square root of 3 over 2 divided by minus 1 half. Okay, the two negatives cancel. And we invert and multiply, you know, times 2 over 1. I got the square root of 3. All right, so square root of 3. But if you learn to read um, tangent as a slope, when it comes to the friendly angles, the, the known values, of course, then. Um, the slope is greater than 1, and it's positive. So tangent has to be positive down here. Tangent has to be positive. So tangent 240 is uh, square root of 3. All right. Well, I hope you're following that well. <laughs> um, it, uh, it, and I realize at this point, uh, you know, most trig students are not really, don't have those uh, down so well. Um, you know, the impulse is to punch a calculator and, uh, you know, uh, but I'm looking for exact values if you're my student. And this is a typical trigonometry exercise. And so learn these exact values, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, a good way to learn it. Anyway, um, all right, so, but, but drawing pictures, don't, don't be lazy about that. Drawing little sketches can help you. Don't, don't be real sloppy about it either. Try to, you know, draw a decent circle and... And uh, you, can, you can learn a lot this way. All right, well, we'll finish it out. Uh, there's cosine. Secant is the inverse. I mean, it's the uh, reciprocal. So it's going to be a minus 2. This will be minus 2 over the square root of 3, which is negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. We've gone through that before. 
cotangent would be 1 over the square root of 3, which is square root of 3 over 3. There you are. So we have all those down. One more example for this video. Theta is 5 pi over 6. Okay, where is that? Um, over here. 5 pi over 6. That's 5 sixths of a half circle. What's 1 sixth of a half circle? It'd be 30 degrees, wouldn't it? And so if you had 5 sixths of a half circle, it'd be 5 times 30, it'd be 150 degrees. And it's over here. So here is um, 5 pi over 6. Okay, right, I know. You can also change this to degrees. 5 times 180 degrees divided by 6 will end up being 150 degrees. So, um, all right, I'm just going to be stubborn and do it in radians because you have to get used to radians. So we want to know what the cosine of pi pi over 6 is and the sine and the tangent. Okay, um, so once again, we um, draw, a little <laughs> draw a little sketch on the unit circle. There's my pi pi over 6, that's my angle of theta, and um, you know, this is minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1. So what's the cosine? Cosine is x value, x. So if I drop down to here, that's almost negative 1, isn't it? So the cosine is going to be minus square root of 3 over 2. Uh, about sine of 5 pi over 6, that's the y value. It looks like one half, doesn't it? And it is one half, so that's uh, one half. Okay. Um, and it's positive. Go, so in the second quadrant, where the quadrants go first quadrant, second, third, and fourth quadrants. They're usually done in um, Roman numerals. Um, okay, so the, in the second quadrant, the x's are negative, the so y's are positive. So cosine and secant are going to be negative. And secant theta is going to be um, minus 2 over the square root of 3. All right, so that's a negative 2 square root of 3 over 3 when you rationalize the denominator. Uh, sine is going to be positive in the second quadrant, so because the y's are positive, and cosecant then and I, I told myself I wasn't going to do this. I, I'm going to put the angle in here. Secant of 5 pi over 6. Okay. Cosecant 5 pi over 6 is reciprocal of 1 half. That's just plain old 2. Now what about tangent? You see tangent is as a negative slope. It's negative. See tangent is positive first and third quadrants negative in the second and fourth quadrants because of the rise or fall of the slopes of the lines. All right, so, uh, and this, this slope is less than negative one in size, in size, and technically it's greater than negative one, but um, negative one, this is shallower, so that ends up being minus square root of three over three, which you can also get it by dividing sine divided by cosine. You can also work through that all right, and which means the cotangent then is the uh, reciprocal, and that would be minus the square root of 3. All right, so flip that, rationalize the denominator, and you got negative square root of 3. All right, so there, there we go. Um, let's go on to a new video where I'll expand some of these ideas.